Hey everybody, it's Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review, and today I've got a product from Kefia. This is the Kefia S1 dual screen laptop screen extender, and what this will do is add an extra screen, a 14 inch 1080p IPS display to your laptop or other portable device. We're gonna dig into it now, and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's take a look at everything that comes in the box. You get a quick start guide here for the S1. This is gonna show you uh, what types of connections it will take if your host device does not have a, a full USB Type-C with display out. You can use the uh, HDMI cable that's included as well. It shows you all the ports here, what comes in the box itself, uh, and it's an overall nice little guide to have for tips just in case you need to reference it. Now we can go a little further here with the user guide. Now this user guide is written in English and it's not micro print, so it's going to be easy to read for you. And uh, up here we do have some parameters here that I will leave up at this point in the video. If you need to come back and check this out, you can. Uh, it is an IPS display at 14 inches. Uh, it is uh, 300 nits of brightness does have three a type C inputs on the back 1080p resolution at 60 Hertz aspect ratio is 16 by 9 so that kind of gives you a basic idea of what you're getting as far as the screen goes again hooking this up to something like a gaming console or a laptop of course or even a tablet or even a phone depending on what you need to use this for now we do get uh, several different cables with this that we'll go over real quickly. If your host device does not have a full USB Type-C with video out port, they do give you a USB Type-C to HDMI cable to use with this. Now you will have to supply power because the HDMI does not. So they give you a, a USB type A to USB type C where you can put some five volt uh, uh, wall adapter that you probably have from your phone or your tablet. That'll work just fine. And they also give you a USB type C to right angle USB type C for uh, a single connection. This is where if you want to plug into a laptop or a gaming handheld that has a USB type C video and audio out, you can do that with that one single cable. So those are your options there for cabling. Now they do give you a nice a carry and storage case with this. It's uh, a, a kind of a leather et type carry case. It's got a nice pouch on the back for carrying your cables and it does have two little handles at the top and this is nice for not only carrying this from place to place if you're going to put it in a book bag or a backpack but also storing it when it's not in use. Taking a look at the unit on the back they have a, a nice little kickstand that sticks out and this will help uh, to prop up your device. If you're going to be using it on its own it's got its built-in kickstand uh, and that is a good thing to have. It's got this carbon fiber type material on the uh, front and back. And as you can see, our screen is on the right. And on the left, we do have a telescoping up to 15.6 inches uh, to fit uh, anywhere from a 14 inch screen to a 17 inch laptop. Flip up up at the top with some nice rubber on it to actually protect your device and hold it in place. On the right, we've got our screen again, 14 inches, IPS display at 60 Hertz, 1080p. And on the back, we do have our triple USB Type-C ports here uh, so that you can connect up the monitor. So overall, that's the unboxing of the S1. Let's get it set up and show you some of the things such as the speaker, which you see here on the bottom, and some of the uh, features that you can adjust with this. 
Okay, so to give you an idea, I have a Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Plus here, uh, straight out from the USB Type-C to the monitor, uh, and I've got it in a mirror mode or duplicate mode, not extended mode. Uh, and you can see no problems here at all uh, with using this as a duplicate uh, or an extended mo mode monitor if you have something like a laptop where you want to do a dual Windows, things like that. Uh, but I'm I'm just giving you an idea of what the overall quality looks like. Again, IPS on the right, OLED on the left, so there is going to be some differences, but the IPS does a good job at uh, accuracy as far as colors go. They're not washed out. They're not um, oversaturated or anything like that, so it's doing a, a decent job on colors here, and I did want to note that uh, as we go through this. So easy to output here, no problems whatsoever, even from something like a tablet or a phone, uh, a, a handheld gaming console like a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally for a bigger screen, maybe a Nintendo Switch, things like that would work just perfect. Okay, so here are some still samples from Wednesday on Netflix. As you can see, in lighted areas uh, of the scenes, it does pretty well here. Uh, so uh, viewing media content is not going to be uh, that much of an issue. Uh, in darker scenes, as you will see, uh, it still holds up. Uh, it would definitely be something that if you wanted to watch uh, content on uh, a second screen while you're doing your work, you definitely could. Using the wheel on the top left, we can automatically adjust our volume of our speakers. And if we double press this, we will go to a menu. Uh, holding a long press on this will turn the monitor off. Uh, so you can turn it off individually if you need to. And then, of course, long pressing it again will turn the monitor back on. Now, double pressing on this particular uh, button will take us into a menu in the lower right where we we can adjust a bunch of settings for this monitor. So let's take a look at the, the, that menu. You can uh, adjust your signal source. Uh, starting at the top, you've got brightness, contrast, backlight, sharpness, eco mode, and DCR. Uh, so you can really set this up how you would like it. Now, I've left it out of the box on sRGB. That's how it came for me. Although I actually like it on user. But in OSD, we've got some other things like language, our OSD horizontal and vertical position, the timer, and the transparency even. So if you don't want it to be uh, fully taking up your vision, you can change that as well. You also have a reset there for that uh, OSD, and you can reset that at any time. Now, uh, another uh, cool thing that you can do with this is, of course, change the language. If you need to change the language from English to another language, you definitely can do so. So you've got a lot of flexibility here to change this around and make it your own, which is nice. Uh, again, uh, I've got a few other uh, little tidbits uh, that I wanted to show you with this specific monitor. Let's go into the next few menus here and we've got uh, the next few menus we have are going to be our uh, color temperature again uh, and then we've got our aspect ratio auto power down if you want it to power off automatically you do have an HDR mode here as well you can even on off or on auto so if you have an HDR device connected uh, it will sense that and put you in HDR mode if uh, you have one connected
Now, if we go all the way down to the bottom, uh, the last one that I wanted to show you was a settings icon. This is where you're going to do your signal source, uh, either uh, type C, USB, or HDMI. You have low blue light, you can adjust your volume, and you can mute the device all at once so you can mute it so no sound comes out of those integrated speakers. You also have a little icon at the bottom that shows you uh, your current resolution 1080p uh, at 60 hertz is going to be what the standard for this particular monitor is. Now you can notice I can go through color temperature, warm, cool, user, sRGB. Now for the testing I did sRGB, but I actually like user. It brightens it up a little bit, evens it out in my mind, uh, and looks pretty good. The last thing I want to talk about is using the entire device as a stand instead of a clamp to the back of a laptop screen. And we can use it as a horizontal monitor. Now I don't have the uh, screen rotation on on my S9 Plus tablet, so that's why it looks sideways to you. But if you had this hooked up to your laptop or your PC or your Mac or whatever you're using and you want to have a slimmer profile like a horizontal uh, you know, extra monitor, you've got that option with this and the whole thing acts as a stand for you to do it. So if you're a streamer and you want to have chat on the right hand side on that extra monitor, you can do that. Or just for scrolling extra web pages, you can easily do it in horizontal mode, which is great. So there you go. That's my review of the Kefia S1 dual screen laptop screen extender. I quite like this. I like the fact that you can use this as a separate monitor instead of just being clamped onto the back of a laptop. Uh, so this really works for other devices other than just laptops. You can hook this up to maybe a gaming console. You can hook this up to a, uh, you know, a handheld gaming console like a ROG Ally. You could hook this up to a tablet like I did or even a phone uh, to get a bigger screen. And overall, it works out really well. It's got a nice IPS display, 1080p at 60 hertz. And the speakers are uh, definitely good enough for me media and music if you need them. They're not going to blow you out of the water, but they are uh, very good for such a thin profile. Overall, I'm definitely going to give this one a thumbs up. This was Luke from Galaxy Tech Review. I hope you enjoyed my review, and I'll check you guys out on the next one.